The day I'm recording this video is October 1st and the price of one gram of silver is about 75 cents. Hello everyone, this is my first uh, silver coin uh, pickup I've made in several months because uh, ever since the price jumped up, uh, I, I've wanted to, to, you know, I don't want to buy when it, the price is high. So uh, this is a small lot of eight coins uh, in the eBay listing. It says it's 24 grams. Now, I suspect that that is uh, 24 grams uh, if it was uh, uh, the, the total coin weight. So the actual silver weight is probably less than that. Now, the, uh, the price on this lot was... Uh, Originally listed the buy now price was fourteen fifty, and I added it to my wish list. And the seller dropped the price to twelve dollars. And before I saw the message that the price had dropped twelve dollars, I decided to go ahead and buy it. Now many of these coins are going to be uh, coal coins, and uh, so we'll see what we've got here. Uh, I could not identify everything from the picture, and one of the things I look for is pictures that are not that good. On some of these coins because if it's great and you could see perfectly what it is I think someone's gonna buy it up really quick but uh, in this case um, there were uh, gonna be a couple of surprises on here and I'm not completely sure about what I'm gonna get but uh, let's take a look first thing we see here is a Canadian dime 1943 George the Sixth on it. That is not one of the better coins out of the slot, but uh, I knew about that. We've got another one right here. This is our second coin. That is, uh, uh, looks like it's got some tape on it. This one seems to be dated 1937. I'm gonna hold it like that so the light doesn't <laughs> overwhelm my thumb. Another one with uh, George the Sixth on it. We're not going to make our money back on those. We've got an older Canadian coin here. This time with uh, George V on it. This one is dated 10 cents, uh, Canada 1914. Of course, it has a hole in it. So we're just buying it for the silver content. Next, we have a little bit of a bigger coin. We've got a New Zealand sixpence. Dated 1934. Another one with George V. Another coin with George V. Another sixpence. This one is an actual British sixpence. Dated 1921. I forget when the cutoff is for both New Zealand and Britain to have uh, sterling silver versus 50%. This next coin is the one I... Uh, uh, of the ones I could recognize, the one I wanted the most. And this one is, when I looked at this side, I just thought I saw the word France right here. But that actually uh, is going to be Frank, as in the uh, denomination of the coin. And this is actually going to be Belgium. One Frank. That's dated 1893. Not terrible shape. I probably would have paid uh, five dollars for that coin by itself if I saw it at a show. Now the last two coins I could not tell from their pictures what it was and they only showed one side. Uh, they look like they're definitely worn down and uh, picking up this first one yes that is definitely worn down. I've got I can see the reading on it pretty good, and that's about the only thing on it that's pretty good. Looks like that looks like the kind of coin that someone put on uh, some train tracks, and now you can't tell at all what it is. Hopefully, the larger coin is a little bit better, and I do see some letters on it, um, some a couple of numbers. Fortunately, someone uh, put a large number five in it. Uh, this is another coin that's worse than a call coin. <laughs> that's is. Uh, gonna have trouble figuring out what that is. I might see a number of 1943 uh, down here at the bottom. That one is really tough to see. So I'm gonna pause this video for a moment and we're gonna add it up. We're gonna 
Uh, don't know if I'm going to be able to figure out this next to last one. I may be able to figure out this last one. And uh, we're going to see if we can figure out the silver uh, content of these eight coins. After looking a little closer, I found the word shilling right here to go along with the date of 1943. So um, this side underneath the, uh, uh, the scribbling on there, it does kind of look like George the, the Sixth. Uh, so I looked up uh, British coins uh, from 19... 43 and the shilling and the date were not right next to each other on the British uh, versions of the shilling and just after a Google search I found this one is from Australia and there is I think a big horn sheep on this side so at least now I know what I'm working with all right now I need to do a correction on this coin it is not from Belgium it is actually from Austria and uh, even though it has the word Frank right here this is not a Frank uh, this coin is, and this is the perfect uh, 2020 name of a coin, this is one Corona. So uh, I need to update my notes on that for just a moment. Okay, wrote all these coins down on a post-it note. And uh, for each coin, I uh, have them listed here in the order that I looked at them. Uh, I've written the total weight in grams of each coin and the percentage of silver that was in each coin. And I got all of these numbers off of ucoin.net. So uh, the good news is in sterling, the Australia shilling, the one that is in poor shape, that one was uh, sterling 92.5%. And then the 1914 Canadian dime is also sterling. So uh, that's a good start. Next up, the... Uh, the Austrian Corona is 83.5% silver. Next up, the two uh, uh, slightly newer Canadian dimes are both 80% silver. And then the bad news is both the New Zealand and the UK sixpence were both 50% uh, silver. So that's going to cut down the odds of us uh, reaching um, our uh, goal here of um, making a profit off of this uh, purchase. So, um, I've, since I've added up the weight in grams of all these coins, uh, to figure out what this one is, um, the uh, seller actually had a, a scale that showed 24 grams on here. I'm going to assume for a moment that they didn't do anything to, to, uh, tinker with the calibration. And what I'll do is I'll add up the seven numbers that we have filled in and whatever is left over is going to be the coin of the weight of the mystery coin and of course this isn't going to be very precise but we'll just uh, kind of give it a rough guess here all right this is the difficult math portion of the video um, two and a third uh, we've got three of those that's going to add up to eight grams we've got five grams right there uh, so those two add up to uh, 13 uh, we've got five and roughly two-thirds here uh, these are both two and five six, so if you add those together, it's another five and two thirds. So you take the uh, the five and two thirds and five and two thirds, add those together, you've got eleven and a third. Add the eight and the five, um, you're going to add up uh, all those together is twenty four and a third grams, and uh, the whole order was twenty four grams. So either they're very well worn, or this one is almost included for free, so we don't even need to care. Uh, about what the the value is of that one um, to figure out what we've got here. So uh, the next thing I'm going to do is we're going to take the number of grams, multiply it by the percentage of silver, and we'll have the total uh, silver grams. So I'll do this uh, off camera. So I took the, uh, like I said before, I took the, uh, the number of grams uh, times the percentage of silver to get the silver, uh, average silver weight of each of these coins. And you can see where I multiplied them all out here. Uh, add all that up together, and it gets 18 grams. And now 18 grams uh, at 75 cents a gram comes out to 13 and a half dollars. And I paid 14 and a half dollars and did not include that uh, in my price. So let's say there's a dollar silver in there. I wouldn't know until I actually weighed it. But I'd say we, uh, if if you're looking as an investment uh, on this particular purchase, I'd say I broke even. Now, uh, maybe uh, these six were an investment, but this one is going in my personal collection. So uh, I'm happy about that one. 
All right. Thanks for watching. Bye.